Hey, what's up, Reefers? This video will be slightly different. You may want to treat this like a podcast, so <laughs> listen to this when you're driving, listen to this when you're on the bathroom, listen to this when you're working out, because most of this will be me talking, I'm so sorry. Uh, so, now I am at a crossroad on what to do next. But before we talk about that, let's talk about what I have going on at the moment. So as you know, especially the OG that has been following this channel, this channel started out following the 45 gallon tank build. This is a cube tank, it has been up for two years. So things like, yeah, things is kind of like a roller coaster. In the beginning, it's kind of sketchy at some point, but thanks to a lot of you guys' advice, this tank has matured pretty nicely. And over, the, over time, I learned how to do things appropriately, even though the channel is called Inappropriate Reefer. One of the milestones is switching over to LODI water. That's huge for me. Before this, for 15 years, I've been using tap water. Man, what a difference it made. I should really make a video on like the huge lesson learned in this two years, but another video. So we started out with a 45 gallon tank. After this tank matured about like a year, year mark, I wanted to do something different, right? So I asked you guys, I asked you guys for suggestions, like what should I do next? So we got this 45 gallon tank going on pretty well. So there were three options, larger tank, a drop off tank, or a frog fish only tank. You guys wanted all three. So that brought us to this tank right here. So over here, we got the 17 gallon drop off tank, which put a check mark into two of the bucket list items. We got a drop off tank down, and then we got a frog fish. And frog, frog fish mochi is right there just chilling. And this tank has been in really enjoyable for me. It's a, it's a challenge to escape it. In fact, I, I'm not completely happy with the escape yet, so this is a work in progress. But as you can see, I'm kind of growing some green stuff hollow down here, and this is gonna take time, especially since there's no flow down here. But we're not gonna talk detail about this tank, that is for another video. I have uh, some master plan for this tank in terms of aquascape, which I think will make it look even better. But again, that's for a different video. However, these things take time. And while I'm waiting for this tank to mature, I would love to work on something else as well. Which kind of bring me to my third tank. Well, I'm not sure if you can consider that a tank, but I'm gonna look. So walk through my really messy room. Take notes on this light that I'm building for the past week. It's a pain in the ass. So Sitting I will show days. you guys. Yeah, I will show you guys when this is done. But check out this little tank. So this started out as just like a really simple freshwater gold shrimp feeder tank. These shrimps are food for mochi. But I could just not stand there and stare at a bare tank, so I started adding plants. I added like penny wharf, I added like spider wood, that's that little branch right here. I added some like a substrate and I got hooked. I was like, hmm, I think a planted tank would be pretty awesome because I've always wanted to do a planted tank. However, there's, uh, there's different consideration when it comes to a planted tank. So let's go back to the living room and I'll tell you what my concerns are and what my thought process is. All right, <clears throat> so there are three things I kind of want to do right now. Uh, number one, I still want to eventually get a larger tank, right? The goal is to do a mixed reef right here in this little style. It's more like a room divider dividing the dining room and the living room. And as I'm slowly trying to build out this area so it's, it has like an underwater theme without it being too obvious. That's why we have these abstract, abstract light lamp that looks kind of like coral. It has that kind of shape, but it's not spelled out. And I also have a lot of different room decor coming that I think will really drive this point home. So I think this will tie the room all together if I have just one large tank. So there's no tank here, just one large tank. I'll probably move a drop off tank somewhere else. So I am thinking about something a little bit larger because the largest tank I've ever done was 65 gallon. I really enjoyed it. I want to do something maybe 120 plus. Uh, and the catch here is that I actually want a tall tank. Because like, look at my tank. If you look at my tank, every time I look at this tank, I have to like duck down, right? Otherwise I'm kind of looking from top down, which is kind of odd, you see all these lines, right? I got ducked down. And if you look over to the drop off tank, same deal here, my eye level is here. I dug down. So at my local fish store, I saw a tank that is, I think it's like 100, 150 gallon, 
it was four foot, which is 48 inches by 18 inches deep by, I think it's either 24, no, it's actually 30, 30 high. So the thing, and the stand was really tall too. So the thing I love about it is like when I stand in front of the tank, right? I feel like I am immersed in that underwater world. I don't have to go like this, right? I just walk up to it, I'm like, oh man, my entire view is underwater and it's fantastic. So I feel like that dimension may be something I want to try. Now the challenge is that it's really deep, meaning that I cannot reach the bottom, meaning that I will need to use a fancier version of this every single time I'm on an aquascape or pick something up. And everybody tell me that, don't do it to yourself. Why are you doing this to yourself? Do not get a tall tank. But you know me, I like challenges, especially the possibility of aquascaping a tall tank like this. I have not done a video of my old 65 gallon yet, but that tank is pretty tall. And I really love the fact that I can really expand upwards. It makes some like really impressive aquascaping, rocks, rockscapes. So in terms of uh, going with a large tank, that is what I'm most leaning towards, a tall tank. Something that when you stand in front of it, you're just immersed in that environment. Of course, there are challenges too. Uh, whenever it comes to a tall tank, like a large tank, you're dealing with a lot of money, first of all. Uh, the YouTube money is not here yet, so <laughs> it's out, straight up out of pocket. Uh, so that's one of the challenges. The second challenge is that if I have a tall tank, that means I have to consolidate my tanks. I cannot have like a, all these other tanks going on and then a large tank, right? At most, I'll probably do one large tank and then one small tank and that's it. I cannot, I cannot like populate my house with all these small tanks. So that will really limit my option in terms of what I can keep. So that is a large tank. I still really want to do it, but I have to really think this through. So that's option number one. So option number two, which will be really cool as well, is that ever since I was in college, I've always wanted to keep seahorses. And back then, the forerunner for seahorses is Ocean Riders. This is, yeah, this is a long time ago. If you remember Ocean Riders, you are one of the OGs. They're based in Hawaii. They are one of the first, I don't want to say company. They're one of the first folks to captivate like like seahorse and keep them successfully and wean them onto frozen food. And ever since then, I've dreamed about seahorse. I actually set up a 20 gallon extra high tank just for seahorse, but that never happened. That never happened, but I, I had a growing like macro algae, soft coral and stuff like that, and it's, it was still beautiful. And this is back then, when I did not use some, I, did, I used tap water and it was doing fine because of all the macro algae. And that's the thing. Simple tank with no skimmer, no sump, Dirty water is my bread and butter. That's what I'm used to. That's what I'm comfortable with. Like clean algae water, some skimmer, that's new to me. So I'm pretty confident I can pull this off. And the reason I mentioned that is because recently a lot of videos I made show like how much it costs to do a tank and a lot of cost is pretty high. And I feel like the cost can be a lot lower if I go a little bit lower tank or a little bit smarter in terms of buying things. So with this tank, my challenge is number one, low cost. Number two, really simple tank. With this tank, what I have in mind is just like a simple glass tank and water circulation, that's it, nothing else. Water circulation tank, no skimmer, no sump, just lots of macro algae growing in the display because that is their natural environment. And in terms of tank, I saw a really nice tank, it's like a 47 gallon column tank. It's, it's, like, it's like this and it's just tall. Which looks awesome. I like aquascaping interesting shaped tanks. So I think that may be an interesting challenge for myself as well. Now the only con is that with seahorses, yes, like these days they take frozen food, but you still have to feed them at least one time a day. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but when it comes time that you have to go travel and stuff like that, whoever is watching a tank needs to know to come over every single day, first of all, and I need to know how to defrost the food and then feed the, feed the tank. So that's gonna be a pain. And number two, I think like most of the seahorse tanks that I've seen, uh, there's always excess nutrient, meaning that usually they have like a layer of cyanobacteria at the bottom, which sometimes may, maybe is un unavoidable, especially since we're feeding frozen food. Usually it's pretty high in phosphate. Uh, but I would like to try to avoid it if possible. So that would be an interesting challenge as well. But in terms of keeping a skimmerless tank and sumpless tank, again, that's my bread and butter. I'm comfortable doing it. So that part should be okay. So that is the seahorse tank. Um, oh, by the way, in the seahorse tank, I would also love to add some pipefish and shrimp fish. 
If you don't know what shrimp fish is, look it up. They're super cool. All right, now let's talk about the last option I want to do. Some of you guys may be like, what are you doing, Inappropriate Reefer? Your channel name is called Inappropriate Reefer. However, like I hinted before, I have always been really interested in doing a planted tank. It's kind of like ass backward from a lot of people. Usually people come from freshwater, right? They do freshwater community tank first, they're going to plant a tank first, and then they go into a uh, saltwater reef tank, right? But for me, I kind of jumped from like community tank to a reef tank, and now I want to do something a little bit more calming. Uh, so I look at all these nice neat aquascape uh, planted tank. I was like, hmm, can I do something comparable to them? Because these guys, oh man, these guys are the master. The, the aquascaping and some of these planted tanks just amazing. So I really get that itch. I want to just try it out, see if I can do it. But the challenge with Planet Tank is that, at least like the aquascape I have in mind, I feel like I need a large tank. If you do a really small Planet Tank, if you aquascape it, yeah, you can make it look nice. But I feel like to really be really impactful, I need something large. It doesn't have to be tall, it just has to be long, right? The scape I want to do is just long, and then maybe kind of shallow, and it doesn't have to be too deep. Main thing is just the length, but that, present a challenge as well, especially if I want to upgrade my reef tank. I do Again, I do not want so many tanks in the house. Another thing with planted tank is that I think once you set it up, that's pretty much it. You can't really add more things like a reef tank. So in terms of being a YouTuber and sharing content, I, I feel like there may not be a lot of updates to share when it comes to planted tank. So that's kind of like a downside as well. It will take up all these rooms in the house, but at the same time, it's kind of like you set it, okay, that's it, it looks nice. So it does not too much to do beyond that point. So that's kind of what I'm struggling with. So the compromise may just be set up a smaller, uh, a smaller planted tank and just see how much I can push it. And can I make it look impressive, even though the dimension is not the largest. So these are the three options. We got a large reef tank. We got a tall seahorse tank around 47 gallons. And then we got maybe a planted tank. So we got these three options, three options running around in my mind. So what do you guys think? What would you like to see? What are you interested in? Leave a comment, help me decide. Last time you guys did great. You guys, you guys did not just like scream it out. You also explain, you, got, you also explain your thought process. Like, hey, why is drop off tank a good idea? Hey, why is a, a frog fish tank a good idea? So I would love to hear your reasoning behind why you choose so. And, I would be really surprised if you actually watched to the end because this is a really, really long ramble. How long has it been? Uh, almost 30 minutes. Oh my gosh. Uh, so I hope if you're driving, you've got to where you got to go. And I hope that if you're listening to this in the bathroom, I hope you finish your business. Otherwise, uh, eat more veggies or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'm sorry. The next one should be more interesting and the next one should be a lot shorter than 30 minutes. If you have actually finished this until this point, by God, please leave a comment. Let me know so I know who is really the hardcore reef squad. All right, guys, with that said, I'll see you next Sunday at 9.30 shop, like always, and have a great week. See you later. Shit, I'm hungry. Turn around. Okay. <laughs>